Hello, and welcome back to FPS Creator Classics, where we take a look at interesting and original games developed in FPS Creator. Now, you might be wondering why my accent has got a little bit more dignified for this episode, and that's because we're playing a game that harkens back to the heydays of the British Empire. This is The Principality of Mars, Part 1, which was developed by Smallfish and Darth Kiwi in 2008. Now, one of the most interesting things about FPS Creator is, of course, its community and the huge variety of different types of games that were made, the huge creativity that was on display. And for every run-of-the-mill zombie shooter, you also got an extremely creative and unique experience like this. This is a steampunk game. We've not played a steampunk game on this series yet, so I thought it'd be interesting to take a look. Um, it's also quite an old game as well from 2008, so uh, pre the open source era, pre-mods. So. Let's get into a little bit of backstory. The British Empire is falling, and Mars is the new enemy, once a colony under the Empire. Mars rose against her masters and broke from British rule. But in the wake of a failed assassination attempt on the Martian King, London is bombarded by Martian shells, and the skies are filled with the warships of an enraged enemy. This is war, and the Empire is losing. As Reynold Fox, a quick-witted British agent, you must turn the tide of war in a clandestine operation that takes you to the very heart of the Principality of Mars, a journey that will bring you through a unique and eerie steampunk world. There are unseen forces at work, and your mission will seldom run smoothly. <coughs> okay, so um, just a quick note. Uh, Starmind, who, who's been a source of many of these FPSC games over the series, has put all of his games into a launcher app. So you have to download the app to be able to get hold of the game. But if you go down to games, it's listed along with several other games that we've played in this series. And as you can see, Principality of Mars is actually a series. It's broken up into three parts. So we're just going to be playing part one today, which is, I think, seven levels long. So um, click that. It'll take you to a Google Drive link and you can download the game. Once you've downloaded it, you may have some issue uh, getting the full experience because some of the videos won't play properly so um, I know for myself that the opening video here doesn't play so I might just play that back through VLC player now just so we can watch it um, but as we go through the game uh, we've also got game uh, videos peppered throughout and uh, I've had to go in and uh, render these out as I think AVI files and then rename them as WMV to sort of trick the uh, trick FPSC into playing them back um, because the, yeah for some reason WMV just isn't supported as a format on Windows 10 or it doesn't seem like it is so um, the, on my playthrough the videos are going to work but on yours you may have to convert these as I say convert them uh, into a different format and just have a little play around um, okay so before we go any further let's watch that opening cinematic hopefully this will help uh, build the world a little bit more find out what we're doing Agent Fox, respond please. What's your code? Seven, six, one, twenty-two, Mr. Hawk. And your identifying quote? A savageness in unreclaimed blood. All right, Reynold, don't go to the regular place today. We need you down at Walsingham House. It's on Cecil Street. You can't miss it. Remember from your training days. How could I forget? You're hiding in plain sight, you scoundrels. Well, whatever works, right? Come round pretty quick. This is a big job. Maybe your most important too. Okay, so let's uh, get into the game itself. It's going to try and play that intro video again after this uh, splash screen. Obviously it won't work, so I'm going to click to skip it. And we have some custom uh, menu music, menu art as well. Uh, uh. 
Right, so here we are. And immediately, I have to say, I'm getting Half-Life 2 vibes. Maybe that's just because it's a station. But uh, quite a lot of custom media going on here. And, uh, oh my god, there's a train. Uh, I'm not sure where the carriage is, but... Um, well, this is a very, uh, yeah, basic train. So modelling, possibly not the best, but I get that it's probably this person's first game, maybe? I I'm not sure. Um, anyway. City of Steam. Okay, that's what this chapter's called. My dad and granddad helped build these streets. I'll not see them flattened. Not by no margins. <laughs> That's uh, a running theme throughout this game will be the low quality microphones that have been used. Uh, so yeah, just bear bear with me on that. I might have to do some tinkering in the edit afterwards to try and boost the sound levels a little bit. Welcome to this informatic machine. These British information stations are scattered throughout the empire and will provide all its hard-working noble citizens with up-to-date information 24 hours a day. Excellent. God save the Queen, citizens of Britain. Mars shook its bloody fist at us, threatened us with war, and we gave them war. Even now, our troops, far superior, do battle with the Red Menace on every front. We will not be driven out. Here, at the heart of the Empire, the heart of Britain itself, we say to you, welcome. Welcome to a land that fought off the hordes of Spain, that bears the finest in arms of men. Welcome to an Empire on which the sun never sets. Welcome to Great Britain, child. How patriotic. No? Okay. I thought that guy might talk. Not all the MB NPCs talk. Platform 2 and 3 are closed for repairs. That's a shame. Anything in here for me? No. Just a reception area. Oh, I see some blimps. And finally we get our first taste of this steampunk world. Anything interesting back here? I quite like this cog. That's cool. Very low res texture though. So, as you can see, quite a lot of custom media here. Nice little touches of Britishness here. Oh my god, look how low res that texture is. I, I, I mean, um, I'm not sure whether that was an optimization thing or whether... Because um, I think you could pick what quality you wanted the textures to be exported in. Um, so, yeah. Oh, hang on. We've got an invisible wall here. Not going any further than this. There is a crater here. I wonder if these blimps, are these Martian things? That well, I guess not. They're, they must be defensive, surely. I know they said that uh, London was being bombarded, but presumably... Yeah, if that was a Martian blimp, it would actively be bombing us. But anyway, let's continue. Ah, the nucleus of British intelligence. Walsingham, Queen Elizabeth's spymaster, lent his name to this house and we strive to honour it. The Nexus, the centre of the web. This is where the great spies come to lend their skills to the Empire. Oh my god, it did that thing. Why, is it, why does FPSC do that? Every time you kind of spawn into a level, it deals you a little bit of damage for no reason. Interesting skybox here. Obviously, we've got a couple of uh, recognisable British landmarks and some other sort of steampunky elements added. I'm not sure if I'll be able to see any more of that. So let's go inside. Hey, Reynold. No trouble? Not as such, Hawk. But have you seen the city lately? Terror's turned it upside down. Aye. Terror. Martian shells. That's what. God. Britain's never been so low. The empire upon which the sun never sets. We've been brought to our knees by a bunch of damned upstarts. Upstarts? Madmen, more like it. The Martian prince hasn't been quite right in the head after his father's accident. But we're wasting time. You said you had a job for me. Indeed we do, Reynold. We'll discuss this further downstairs. You know the way. Reynold's accent is not quite on point. I'm not... Oh, I love that. The little top hat on the hat stand. That's brilliant. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with her, with his accent. 
So let's take a look at some of these monarchs. Isn't one of these Charles the first and Charles the second? I'm not sure all of these monarchs are British, you know. Anyway. This reminds me a little bit of uh, the start of the original Tomb Raider, where you can kind of explore the house a little bit, go and see the library. Presumably we won't be asked to do any kind of jumping in here. But it's nice that they've added these little sort of world building-y moments. So, anyway, let's make our way through this uh, facility. I assume we're going to meet some sort of, like, M character who's going to give us a mission. Oh, nice, it's a secret wall. Anything over here to see? No, just more... Yeah, okay. Not sure what she's doing here. Oh wow, it's gone very sci-fi all of a sudden. This is cool. Nice little, uh... Kind of, yeah. Not even sure what kind of space you would call that. It's more than just a lift shaft, it's like an atrium almost. Deep beneath the foundations of Walsingham House lie the clandestine chambers of intelligence, the secretive workshops of the British Ingenuity, and the offices of Spymaster Halliday. Here, I should be able to arm myself for whatever assignment the service has in mind for me. Welcome to the Secret Service Headquarters, Mr. Fox. A pity you couldn't see it under more fortunate circumstances. This is our local code-breaking department, checking for messages in marginal newspapers. We are at war and our intelligence has got to be totally up to date. We haven't much time, so you should collect your equipment now. Just through this door and take a right and you should find yourself in the armory. Okay. And as you can see, he is a custom character, but um, yeah, the modelling is uh, not great. He's pretty basic, but um, yeah, and he is static as well, not, not animated at all. Still, never mind. I know that some of the characters here are retextured, not just this guy here. There are some, uh, I think, soldiers a bit later on that are retextured. So they are perhaps slightly higher quality and animated. The engine room. Okay, armory. Randall Fox, Randall Fox. Good, good, good to see you. Good. Big mission I hear. Mars I hear. Very dangerous in the current climate, positively charged. Morning, Axel. Still muttering to the rats in the walls? Charged, livid, irate, and teen like a time bomb. You will be busy, I feel, and you'll need a few <laughs> trinkets to survive out there. Okay, so that's one of those videos that when I first played the game didn't play properly, so I had to render it out as a different format. And yeah, so anyway, you may have to do the same. Um, the modelling on this guy, can we talk about that for a second? I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah. He's almost not really looking human, but never mind. I do appreciate the effort that's gone into. Wow, what is this? That's cool. That's kind of like a uh, diving suit type thing. Almost reminds me of a Big Daddy from Bioshock, which I think this game actually probably predates. So, yeah, that's kind of cool to see uh, to see that sort of imagery here. Quad open bolt, a bolt action rifle powered by hydraulics. Range of two to two and a half miles. When you're done ventilating the targets, follow me to the next room. 
Okay, so we've got some uh, custom weapons as well. These are difficult to put together. So, uh, yeah, props to the developer for doing that. There doesn't seem to be any way to zoom in or do iron sights. Do I even have a crosshair? No? Okay. Did you just... Th those three shots literally went everywhere but the target. Okay, well, uh, yeah, that's not a particularly useful weapon, but sure. I think even these concrete segments are custom as well. I don't recognise any of this. I picked up something. I didn't see what it was. We're next to a furnace. Would have been nice to have had some uh, kind of fire sound effects playing here. What is this? No? Okay. Doesn't seem to want to... This... Now this is something quite novel. Don't look so surprised, sir. This, this is a masterpiece of counter-warfare. This is the single greatest leap this empire has made in technological application since the steam engine and the airship. The cage, you see, sits on the head, plunging the needles into the skull of the user. Go on, try it. It won't hurt. I assume. Ah, oh, you lying freak. It hurts like hell. Well, it was imperative you wear it. How to complete your mission otherwise. This is the Brainwave Matrix Reassembly Cage, or the Thought Veil, as some more foolish operatives have dubbed it. The needles administer drugs direct to the brain. The cage supports the system and also emits small but effective waves in a spherical ESP shield around the head. Yes, but what in the name of Earth is this thing? Well, have you heard of... Have you heard of the readers? A little. I'm certain it's grounded in fantasy. I know better. I'm at the heart of things. People shouldn't, but they tell me things. To tell me how their mission's carried off. And there's been talk of new soldiers. Even human machines that were once men. Their brains still writhing, horrified within the metal shells. I've heard that they can read minds. That information should be classified, but news gets round fast. Especially at a time like this. Martian scientists have successfully used Red Curtain. Red Curtain was a hallucinogen that only grows on Mars, am I right? Yes, but it's more than just a drug. Its side effects are unprecedented. If you take two grams, you're more alert or in tune with your surroundings, you, you can almost see people's personalities. You, you can see what you need to do to please them. It is the ultimate empathic experience. But strip away the human being and replace it with a machine and a brain, and you have a deadly combination. Without all that, that flesh to worry about, the brain has unprecedented power. The drug's effects are increased a hundredfold and these mechanical blasphemies can read people's minds? I'm afraid so. Hence the thought veil. It will hamper their efforts to read you. You'd better go pretty quickly. Command seemed in rather a hurry to brief you. You don't have much time. Just go through that door at the end there. Okay, so there was a lot to take in there. Um, I kind of got that there was a... Uh telepathic drug involved. I'm not sure how they're going to work that into the gameplay, but... Oh my god, what's... What? I'm all out of guns. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, and I'm not sure. I don't think this gun shoots anything. I think it's a melee weapon. Getting into these vents. Of course, it wouldn't be an FPS game without a bit of vent crawling. I know I say that all the time, but it is true. So, uh, Walsingham's been attacked. Presumably, those were Martians.
Okay, this rifle turns out is terrible. I'm going to make a run for it. It's so inaccurate, this thing. And the enemies also have quite a lot of health. I did actually, in the process of uh, doing the research for this episode, I did um, speak to the developer and he did say that he's not massively happy with the game looking back because he gave the enemies too much health. Spent so much time on like the world building and the cinematics and the, the art direction and the textures and stuff that the actual gameplay kind of fell by the wayside. Anyway. Mars meant war when the shells started dropping a few weeks ago. To hell with those Martians, those fools who'd carry out orders no matter the purpose, no matter the cost. Okay, I... Reynolds, thank God you're alive. Get out of here while you can. Keep going until you reach the elevators. Take them up to the surface. I will do just that. Rationing is now in effect. All families will be issued ration slips and a ration card, the number of slips being proportionate to the size of the family. Landowners, gentry and aristocrats will also be given priority. Rations may be slim, but we are at war. But why not aid your country and grow your own food? This thing is just not... Oh, it does... it does shoot. Someone is shooting me and I cannot tell... Oh, it's from up there. Right. Let's suppose there's any health around here, is there? Oh, hang on. It's a different weapon. So we have a Samson chamber pistol and a bayonet, which looks exactly the same. I don't know how you can reload a bayonet, but we just did. Right. Let's go and stab some people. Let's go stab some Martians. Well, that is a machine gun. There we go. Look at this. Rotating cylinder cannon. Say hello to my little friend! Okay. Is that health? Come on, it's got a plus on it. Give me some health. Someone's shooting me, but I cannot tell from where. Where's that coming from? Like genuinely, where is that coming from? Haha! -ha. Hey, what? How do I... Uh-oh. Ran out of ammo there for that, ended up having to use the bayonet. Okay, well, they didn't waste any time in throwing us into the action here, but, um... It's a little bit clunky, the gameplay, I have to say. But I was kind of expecting that. The enemies have got a lot of, uh, health. Wow. They've literally blown the roof off of this, this room here. Uh, I don't know what these switches do, but I'm going to 
I'm gonna see what they do. No? Okay. Okay, only one of those did a thing, but I don't know what thing it did. This looks like it's a dead end. Okay, I'm not. I've got nothing for my rotating cylinder cannon. Uh, cannon. Right, let's try the pistol. Okay. Do we have anything for our... Yeah, here we go. My favourite weapon so far. This looks like a slight retexture of one of the sci-fi weapons that came with FPSC. They just added a red uh, sleeve to the barrel. So sorry, I came back down here, but I don't really know where I'm going. Uh, do any of these doors work? No. I feel like going back into this lift shaft is a bad idea because this just takes me down. This cannot be the way. But then again, the enemies were in this direction, so surely I have to come back down here to go somewhere. Yeah, I must have to go this way. Right, back down we go. Well, we know we're heading in the right direction when we start shooting at things, so uh, good stuff. Where was that other enemy that was shooting us a while ago? Or is he not here anymore? Let's see if I can get over these boxes, see if there's anything up here. No. No, it's just a storeroom. I will take that gun. 100%. I don't want to just rely on that uh, on that cannon though. So lighting is uh, it's okay. It's a little bit basic, but um, like here, you can just see that there's one light that's been placed in the middle of the room, so it's just casting one set of shadows on the wall. So uh, doesn't really match up with the kind of lighting there would be in here. But um, I mean, it's yeah, it's it's okay. I do quite like the level design though, this is all quite nice, all this uh, industrial stuff. Some chains, some cogs, yeah, I mean, it does look suitably steampunk. God, it can only be the Martians, but to strike here, I tremble to think on it. If they know Walsingham House, and if they have got in, then they are f more formidable than we had imagined. I can only hope we can stop them before they do any serious harm to the service. Presumably we're going to fight back through uh, the house now that we came in earlier. Oh my god, I just fell to the floor. What the f- No! No! Are you kidding me? Okay, right, well, uh, okay, uh, good. I seem to have survived, falling to my death. Ah, there we go. I just want to see if there's anything up here first. No, okay, good. They've given me more of this rifle that does nothing.
if I actually... Well, I hate that thing. Oh, hello, precision rifle. What's this? And it has a scope. Awesome. He had a lot of health. Again, another custom weapon. This one is not animated, but um, I know that making animated weapons is a bit of a pain, so fair play. Um, it's nice to just see some different weaponry for a change. It's not just the standard weapons that came with FPSC, or even the ones that uh, you could find in the model packs. Ronald, the margins have broken into Walsingham House. Meet me on the fourth floor, but the whole level is in lockdown. I left the key to my office and library. When you get to my office, use a security override to open the door on the fourth floor. Okay, there's the key. So that's why they set up the library earlier. So, see, that's actually quite nice. Set up and pay off. It's uh, good, good narrative work there. It wasn't just there to, you know, be a fun place to explore. So how do we get up? There we go. I knew that key would come in handy for something. Wow, they literally drove a tank through the wall. They're pretty brazen, these Martians. They do not... yeah. Texture is uh, extremely low quality, although I think we're noticing that with pretty much all the assets here, that the, uh, the textures are very low quality. I just wonder if maybe the developer perhaps struggled to export the game correctly and had to lower the settings in order to get it to work maybe? I don't know. Again this could have been uh, something to do with um, yeah, poorly optimised assets initially and so many levels in an FPSC game that this has struggled to kind of fit everything in so you have to scale down the textures to be able to get it to work the memory cap being as it was Okay, well we've opened something. I heard something open behind us. Now where did that door open? Was that back here somewhere? Now, is he shooting at me, or is he just randomly shooting at that? Oh, come on. I'm all out. That's bad. Oh, God, that machine is... That's an enemy, isn't it? I mean, I basically just unloaded into it because I don't really know what I'm doing, but it seems to have stopped it. Oh, that's a shame. Our hat stand is not textured anymore. Okay, so we came down here and I guess grabbed some more weapons, but this is not the way forward. Where are we going? Okay. I'm really not sure if that mech thing actually is doing anything. Presumably it is. The modelling on this is a little bit better. It's quite boxy, but it's an uh, interesting design. It, oh, it is definitely a character. I'm kind of pushing on it, and it's sort of leaning out of the way. So, no, it definitely is a thing. Now, we're in here. Wasn't there a switch somewhere to open a wall, or am I just... This was how we... Uh got to the underground bit last time. How do we... Okay, maybe it's not this way then. So there was nothing down here. We already went where we needed to go, right? Oh, uh, no, yeah, we already went down here.
Okay, not entirely sure what I'm doing at the moment, where I've got to go. So we came down here, picked up our weapons, came back. Came in here. I mean, surely then it... So just follow the enemies. I know he said go up, but I'm going to go down and just see if there's anything down here. No, okay, never mind. Thought there might have been some ammo or some health. Doesn't look like there's any health in this game. You can't pick up anything. I certainly haven't noticed any health packs or any ways to regenerate. Oh, hello. Who are these two? Reynold, thank God you're okay. Halliday here was working up a fit. Jesus, Hawk, what the hell was that machine? It fought like a man. Looked like one, too. That fox was a reader. The brains of innocent human beings, pumped full of drugs and housed in a metal body. We're certain they could read minds. But it didn't act like it could read mine. It just fought like a standard soldier, albeit a tough one. I assume this thought veil contraption strapped to my skull really works. Indeed, we were the most fortunate that you were already armed when the attack began. But come, we haven't much time. I should brief you before you go. Come, follow me. But it's better to get the basics established. Seven years ago, in the year of our Lord, 2025, the British Empire made the greatest leap mankind has yet achieved. We sent a man to the moon, and not only that, but we set up cities, shops, offices, factories, and farmland there as well, under vast domes of glass with a great deal of effort. But there were still so many other lands to conquer. Two years ago, we sent an expedition to Mars and colonized that ball of rock as well. I know, Mr. Halliday, sir. I was part of the expedition. I still have nightmares. <coughs> what little useless people we found there were enslaved or sold as curious pets. Cities were built, most importantly, near Venetia. Built on a system of canals, this was the home of the governor of the Red Planet. Assigned by the Empire, of course. Scientific possibilities were opened up. New avenues explored. Red Curtain, a new drug that only grows on Mars, was discovered and experimented with. And then, the rioting began. Shops looted. Fights in the streets. Police and soldiers drowned. Shot and stabbed. Mars wanted independence and they crowded around this man. Carl Hansen, like moths to a flame. Hansen and his poor out supporters declared Mars independent from the land of the British Empire. And that was something we could not stand for. Within 48 hours, half of our standing army was mobilizing on the face of the rebel planet. We fought for weeks, months. We are the greatest force in the globe, the very pulse and power of the solar system, and yet, we could not win outright, though we crushed force after force, though we raided slums, factories, rebel outposts, still we could not overcome them. No matter where we struck, there were always more, always another frontier to conquer, and eventually we were exhausted. We had won, there could be no doubt of that. We could not keep the planet indefinitely. There was no choice but to give the fools their precious independence. Carl Hansen was elected as president with almost indecent haste and moved into the old governor's palace, the Spectre Orbital Station, accessible only from the neo Venetia skylift. He became almost paranoid of another impending British expedition or invasion, and he began to research new methods of war. His scientists discovered that the Red Curtain drug allowed the user to almost feel the thoughts and impulses of any other human being, giving them certain insight into another person's thoughts. Hansen took the drug in large doses, and it allowed him to almost see into the minds of his advisors, giving him the edge in diplomatic conferences. But the drug has longer-lasting side effects than one might think. 
It drives the user nonsensical and insane. Soon Hansen had delusions of grandeur, mad with power, and declared himself king of Mars. There was to be no democracy. There was to be only him. And that brings us up to present day. Two weeks ago, on the 9th of August, 2032, Carl Hansen was shot, but not killed. The bullet is lodged, we're told, in his skull. He has been unconscious since that time, and the diagnosis is not good. They doubt he will ever awaken, and in his place has risen an even greater threat. His son, Prince Constantine, reigns in his stead over the new principality of Mars, and as expected, he did not look kindly over his father's assassination attempt. Did the British do it? Certainly not. The situation hardly merited such extreme distasteful measures. King Carl was unstable and worrisome, but that hardly abdicates his murder. But now, our hand has been forced. Because Mars has declared war on the Empire. Yes, we are smothered in a veil of filth, a sheet of talentless, gibbering idiots from an unworthy land, and what's more, we're losing. This war cannot continue. The Queen herself has asked for you, Reynold, to be the one to help Britain in our hour of need. You are to go to Mars. And my mission? You'll be briefed en route. For now, make your way to the launch barrel. Never could understand how he even got into these things. The very idea of being fired into space in what could only be described as a giant bullet, well, doesn't bear thinking about. How do they said you'll be briefed once you're out of the atmosphere, by the way? You're inside? Good. You'll be blasted off in a few seconds. You're now rocketing away from Earth at over 500 miles per hour. Kindly start up the gramophone on the wall. It contains your mission briefing. All right, I think that's it. Okay, that was a long uh, cinematic at the end there, but I like that we got to see some of the kind of concept art that uh, went into it. I mean, um, yeah, it's uh, really interesting to see all the different designs laid out there and how they translated into the game. Um, so that was the first part of The Principality of Mars. 
Um, and yeah, I think there was some good stuff in there. Um, there was a lot of custom texture work, and I like the world building that went on. It's just an interesting setting. It's just a bit original and different to pretty much any other FPSC game that I've ever played. Um, obviously, on a technical level, there were a few things that were perhaps not so great. So the the microphones obviously used were were pretty. Um, yeah, the, the volume was very quiet, and there was there was a lot of noise in the signal, so um, very difficult to make out what people were saying. Um, and uh, yeah, there was some sort of uh, the odd texture issue here and there, and some of the the models were very low quality textures. Um, but again, I, I'm not sure if that was a deliberate decision or whether it was a um, uh, you know something that had to be done to be able to get the game to run properly. Um, so it's, I wasn't keeping track of how many levels we played there. I think it was seven, but I'm I'm not sure. So um, that well, that set us up for the rest of the story. So um, uh, yeah. I'm not sure if you got it from that ending cinematic, but we have now been blasted off towards Mars, and uh, yeah, so I guess parts two and three take place on the Red Planet itself. So I'd be interested to see where that goes. Perhaps I'll play part two and uh, perhaps later part three as, as other videos in this series um, in a bit. So overall, yeah, I think it's um, it's just really inventive. It, it may not have the best execution, but again, as with a lot of these uh, FPSC projects, the the creativity, the passion behind it, it's it's just dripping with it basically and uh, i think it's a really nice example of um yeah just the, the types of interesting projects that came out of this um little game engine and uh and it's very creative community so i guess all that remains is for me to say thank you so much for watching this episode of fps creator classics it's been an absolute delight to play this game for you today i'm very interested to see where parts two and three go and perhaps one day we shall revisit this series and, and play the concluding parts of this gripping yarn that is being spun in red cloth. So uh, yes, once again, thank you for joining us and uh, look forward to playing another game for you in a future episode very shortly. Good night.